Um, two part question for you. Ramel is not <clears throat> in the lineup tonight, not leading off. If there's anything you need to tell us about TAP and your decision to uh, lead off Charlie tonight. Okay, let's, uh, we'll ask her the Tapia question. Tap, if you recall, on that infield hit, uh, yeah, not the one that he dove to first, the other one where he ran through the bag, hit the back part of the bag, and he uh, basically sprained his big toe. Ooh. It was a little, uh, you know, a little sore as the game unfolded. He was able to make it through the game. And then overnight, this morning and this afternoon, it's it got prog progressively worse. So he's in a lot of discomfort. Uh, so he's not in there. He can, you know, he can walk, but, you know, he wouldn't be able to play in the field. We're still seeing if, you know, where he is, it's availability to pinch hit, but that could be doubtful too. So anyway, we're looking at our uh, lineup uh, as it's constructed defensively, and we thought, who are we going to lead off? And then Red and I and, and the coaches uh, decided to go old school. Turn back the clock, Patrick, uh, <laughs> to uh, 17 and 18 with none other than Charlie Blackman leading off. Talked to Chuck. Chuck was in. He goes, let's do it. Let's go old school. So there we are. Okay. Plus, it's he's been getting on base. He's been hitting the ball. He'll get the extra at bat as we come back around on the eighth and ninth. Uh, we think it's the right way to go. As I recall, buddy, he did pretty all right for himself when he was a leadoff hitter. You know, we can go through the numbers, Patrick, if you want, <laughs> but he was pretty good as a leadoff hitter for the Rockies, especially 2017. He was 103 ribbies from the leadoff spot. If I recall. 37 homers. Yeah. Led the National awesome. League in hitting. That was awesome. It was a great year for Chuck. My second, actually, rather third question of the day for you is this. Uh, I don't believe any of us, when we talked to Bill Schmidt yesterday, brought up C.J. Crone. We should have. We didn't. Uh, he's still with the club. Right. Um, and if you don't know this, that's cool. But do you know, are there desires within the team to – maybe keep CJ or re-sign him, bring him back next year. And second part of that question, overall, how do you think he's done as your first baseman? I think, well, I'll, I'll answer the second part first. Uh, I think he's done well. Uh, you know, it's been a little bit, uh, you know, peaks and valleys, but I mean, overall, the numbers are, are pretty solid. The OPS is over 800. There's been power there. And, and Patrick, I don't think we've seen the best of CJ. And, you know, we'll see what happens these last couple of months. But, you know, I think overall he's uh, he's produced. And uh, defensively, I think he's been at, he's been on a scouting scale, solid average. Uh, there was a couple hiccups early in the year, uh, but I think he's cleaned a lot of those things up. Uh, but overall, I mean, he's been productive. He's been one of our better offensive players. You know, to the question about uh, potentially uh, bringing CJ back, you know, he's a free agent as well. Uh, you know, we're going to we're going to explore it, talk, uh, you know, talk about it, talk to CJ about his interest in coming back. So, you know, there's potentially a fit there for sure. Uh, I know that he's enjoyed uh, his season here, the coaching staff, his teammates, the city. Uh, you know, he's from the West. Uh, you know, raised in Arizona, went to the college in Utah. So I think there's uh, there, there's a comfort here and he's, he enjoys being a Rocky, he likes the organization, how he's been handled, how he's been treated. So we'll see. But it's uh, I think it's a definite possibility. Uh, we'll see how the next two months play out in his performance. But I think he's had a good year. Thanks, buddy. Danielle. Hey, buddy, or come on, Marquez. Um, what do you think is the next step for him and his development? What do you kind of, what mark do you want to see him hit next? I think fastball command is always a priority with, uh, with Hermond. And I think development of the changeup uh, is important too. Fastball is a plus pitch. Uh, both his slider and curveballs uh, are, are plus pitches. Uh, 
I think he can improve his, his fastball command, and I definitely think he's got to incorporate the changeup more into his arsenal, especially against the left-handed hitters. Thank you. Daniel? Um, hi, buddy. I just have a quick uh, injury update to follow up on, if you don't mind. Um, Ryan Rollison, there was a video of him that he posted of throwing. Um, do you have any update on where he's at in his uh, progression? Yeah, he's starting to play catch. He's building up arm strength. Uh, you know, he's progressing. Uh, no timetable yet on, you know, any sort of game uh, situation. But I, I do like the fact that he's uh, getting himself out there on social media. It's what a lot of young players do. It's great. I'm more, I'm more interested in how he's feeling and how he's throwing the ball and, uh, you know, his timetable. But he's, he's making progress, gaining arm strength. Uh, you know, he'll pitch again this year for sure. Thank you. Huey? Go ahead, Huey. You got me, buddy? You got got you me? Looking for, uh, yeah, looking for Jeff Euson from AT&T yeah. Sports. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. First time, first time caller. So, hey, I want to go long back time, to last hey, night. First time caller, long time listener. Long time listener. Yes, exactly. Uh, I need a rules clarification, please. Last night on that ball that got lodged in the padding, my understanding was if it got lodged, you throw up your hand, it's an automatic double. But if you went to play it, then it was still a, still a live ball. Yes. Uh, you know, Jeff Nelson and I talked about that on the field. Uh, Jeff, of all the umpires, Huey, is probably the most versed in the rule book. He is uh, by far, for me, uh, the best at rules interpretation. And we both agreed that, uh, you know, to your point, old school, balls lodged, an outfielder throws his hands up, whether it's fence, Ivy and Wrigley Field. Uh, you know, underneath a, uh, you know, at the bottom of the fence lodged, uh, you know, whatever that might be, where the ball is stuck, lodged, however you want to describe it. I know a, a player's been instructed to throw his hands up. If he doesn't and he tries to go grab it, it's in play. But that has since changed. When replay came into existence, there was always that avenue for, uh, last night for me to challenge that play, regardless if he went in there and got it or not. The, the ball being lodged overrules everything, no matter what the outfielder does. So uh, the umpires did need to go to replay to see, uh, to, you know, to verify that the, you know, the, the two umpires or the three umpires that, uh, you know, were watching the play, you know, verified it with their own eyes. Jeff did say to me, he goes, buddy, uh, because of replay now, you can challenge it if you want. And I said, Jeff, no, I don't need to challenge it because, you know, Stu said it was lodged. And we quickly asked Jonesy if it was lodged. And Jonesy said yes. But because of replay and the umpire's ability to, to go to replay or either manager to go to replay, the throwing up of the arms or a player going to dig it out, uh, you know, all bets are off. The, the lodge ball trumps all that. All right, fair enough. I guess you learn something new every day. Thank you. Even at your age. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. We'll go back to Patrick for a few follow-ups. Hey, buddy, follow up on tap. I should have asked you the first time around. I, toe injuries can be really weird. They can clear up, yes. or they can linger. Right. So, so you just have to wait and see to, about whether it's a possible IL or not? Yeah, I don't think it's an IL, Patrick. I'm not a podiatrist, but talking to Keith, I think that uh, he, fe he feels pretty confident that this just, you know, could be a day or two or three. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. And we'll finish up with Owen. Go ahead, Owen. Hey, buddy, I missed a little bit of this, so I hope I'm not asking you to repeat anything. But um, uh, just going back to the deadline, did you um, feel the need or, or to talk to the team as a whole at that crossroads in the season? And either way, is there a message you'd like the team to take from 
the deadline activity of the Rockies? No, I uh, didn't feel the need. Uh, we talk to our players all the time, uh, you know, in our, in the messaging from the coaching staff and I to stay focused on today's game. Don't get distracted by the noise. Most of the players in that room uh, are unaffected by uh, the deadline based on their service time and tenure. Uh, the guys who were involved with uh, all the noise and the gossip, uh, we spoke to those guys uh, quite often uh, as far back as spring training about certain things. So uh, the communication levels were, you know, always fluid and in place. Uh, didn't feel the need for a big team meeting or anything like that, no. Players, but is there, players are fine. And is there something you want them to take away from, you know, the direction the team's heading based on the, the last 48 hours uh, or whatever? Well, the direction the team is heading is uh, beat the Padres tonight, uh, continue yeah. to grow uh, as a group. Uh, you know, there's some individual components that uh, we need to see uh, the next uh, month, two months, like I've talked about, as far as expect expectation of performance and improvement. And the things they've worked, uh, they're working on uh, to play good baseball, uh, to continue to solidify the the ability to play good baseball. Uh, that will help this team next year and in the, in the coming years after that. <clears throat> uh, you know, you know, be, you know, be a team that uh, our Rockies fans will, uh, you know, be proud of the next two months. And we'll get to the off season and, you know, there's natural movement of, of players and roster changes and decisions that are made. And, uh, you know, we'll see what that brings. But uh, in this case, as you guys know, the trade deadline is, is passed. Uh, there wasn't any suitable uh, trades that were uh, consummated from, you know, probably both sides. So, uh, you know, that happens, right? That, that happens. Uh, like I told Patrick, it takes two sides to feel good about a trade. And as it related to a couple of our more high profile players, it didn't happen. Great. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you. All right.